Okay, welcome back. Um, we just finished up drawing a free body diagram of this chunk of water and we replaced all these pressure distributions with forces, couples, and resultant concurrent forces. Now, just to continue, um, we need to find what H and V is equal to so we can replace H and V onto the solid, onto the real free body diagram of this real gate, which is this because right now we just have this curved pressure distribution and we want to replace that with H and V but we need to know what H and V are equal to and we can solve that using this free body diagram Oops, using this free body diagram and once we figure out H and V we go back to the gate free body diagram and we get rid of this pressure distribution and replace it with H and V so here um, let's try to figure out the weight of the H2O and the weight, actually a different color the weight of the H2O is going to be equal to the volume times the specific weight of this liquid and remember this is one quarter, right, because it's not a full circle, it's a quarter of a circle times the area and the area is pi times one squared um, and then that's the area, so it's a quarter of the area times the width, which we called W, but in this case W is 1, so it'll just be 1, times the specific weight of the liquid, and, and you know in metric the specific weight is 9.8 kilonewtons per meter cubed, or 9800 newtons per meter cubed. Okay, so that's the weight of the water. Um, let's try to figure out what FP1 is, this force right here. And FP1, remember, is the specific weight times um, the depth. And in this case, it would be right here. So it's 4 meters minus 1 meter gives us 3 meters. And the, I believe, um, it would be, it'd be force, and, or actually, we can, we can do, um, pressure times area, right, because F is equal to PA, and this would create our pressure, and this would create our, or our area would be, um, one meter times width, Right, because the width, this height into the camera is is one meter, right, per unit of length, per width is equal to one. And since it's a quarter circle, you know that the height is also equal to the radius here. So this distance right here is one, so it's one times one, one meter times one. And that gives us FP1 and FP2, FP2 it's going to be equal to this force right here. It's the pressure at the centroid of the surface. So here's the surface. And again, that's 9,800 Newton per meter cubed times, in this case, it would be 3.5 meters, right? Because from the free surface to here is 3, but from here to the centroid of that surface, which is right here, is another 0.5 meters because this is 1, so it would be 3.5, so this is the pressure times the area, again it's 1 meter times W, and W is equal to 1, and so those are our three uh, force, force, weight. We don't need to worry about this couple or this moment right here because when we, we can find what H and V are equal to using only two equations. Those two equations um, are the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero and the sum of the forces in the y direction are equal to zero, right? Because h and v are, um, or h and v are both horizontal and vertical forces. So we really don't need to worry about moments and taking the sum of moments about a certain point. In this case, there are other cases where h and v aren't exactly perfect like this where you would have to take a moment, but 
nonetheless it's just simple statics and uh, we can solve for h and v uh, just using this setup here. So let's solve for x or let's solve for all the x forces. So sum of all the x forces equals zero. So on here it'd be negative h are there any other forces? Yes, FP2 plus FP2. Let me check if that's right. Yeah, that's right. Is equal to zero. And we find out that H is equal to FP2. Oh, okay, that was easy. How about all the Y? Well, Y we have positive V, and then we have negative FP1, so minus FP1. And we also have the weight of the water, right? So it would be minus the weight of the H2O. And doesn't look like there's any more vertical forces, and that's equal to zero, right? And if you solve for V, you get V is equal to FP1 plus the weight of the water. Okay, so we have V and we have H. Great. Now, since we know what H and V are now, since we know what this is, we can replace this pressure distribution on the real gate free body diagram with H and V and get rid of this pressure distribution. Why? Because this pressure distribution is the same as this green pressure distribution acting on the chunk of the water because it's the same um, style of shape. So in other words, we can, let me draw this free body diagram over again down here. Um, let's do it in orange because that's the color of the gate, just so we know we're talking about the gate. So the gate, so the gate looks something like this, right? Okay. And we have the weight of the gate acting at the center. Oops, weight of the gate, weight of the gate. Okay. And then we have our hinge forces, right, the little pivot hinge hy and hx and then we have this pressure distribution but we can get rid of that and replace it with h and v and h and v are acting like this right here's v here's h don't get this h confused with hy and hx okay um, and I think that's it now we know what the weight of the gate is Actually, no, we don't. That's what we're trying to figure out. I'm sorry. We know what H, we know what V is. We don't know what the weight of the gate is. That's what we're trying to figure out. And we don't know H, Y, and H, X. But if we took the summation of moments about the hinge and set that equal to zero, we don't need to worry about what those two forces are. And we can just solve for the weight of the gate using H and V here. So let's, let's do that. Let me do it in another color. I like green. Okay, so the summation of moments about, let's say, point H um, is equal to zero, and we'll say again this is this is positive moment. So the very first one we have is the weight of the gate, and remember this distance, it's it's one meter. And this distance right here is 4r over 3 pi. So the distance from h to the uh, line of weight of the gate is 1 minus 4r over 3 pi, right? So that's the distance. So it's going to be weight of the gate times 1 minus 4r over 3 pi. And that creates a positive moment and then minus V, right, because V creates a clockwise moment, that's negative, V times, well, just 1, and then I think that's it, because H here, we didn't even need to worry about H, because H is along the line used for the moment, and, well, that's 0, so we don't need to worry about H, and I'll set that equal to 0, Let's rewrite this weight of the gate, 1 minus 4. Well, the radius is, is 1 meter over 3 pi. And then minus V. Well, V we found up here to be FP1 plus weight of the H2O 
um, times 1, right, because this 1 is equal to 0. And remember, we, we, we figured out the weight of the water. We figured out the force of P1, and we figured out the force of P2. And here, we only need FP1 and the weight of the water. And if we solved FP1, FP1 up here is, I believe, equal to uh, 29,400. And the weight of the water is equal to uh, 24,000, or 2450 times pi. And remember this, this for width is equal to 1, right? Because we still have the variables w. And we said per unit of length, and per unit of length means per every 1 meter. So those are our fp1 and the weight of the water. And if we plug that back into here, and we solve for the weight of the gate, right? All this just becomes simple algebra. Well, not really simple, but algebra. Uh, we find out that the weight of the gate is equal to uh, 64,450.6 Newton per meter. Per meter because it's per unit of length. And that's what the question was asking for. So there's our answer.